um, you know, it gets very difficult to know exactly what they meant. And there's a lot of interpretation with visual language, and it depends highly from which culture you come from, how you interpret something like this. So, in order to to um, to find out how thoughts are designed, ultimately we take an example. I take an example. It's an example of written language. In other words, writing, not typography. There's a big difference between the two. Uh, typography is just what is set and what is what produces repeatable patterns. There's also handwriting, which plays a big role uh, in the history of writing. Um, so we start. Here, that's more or less random. I talked to a couple of people at Stupo Berlin and they said, oh, it's not the first writing. There's much more you should talk about. But most know the cuneiform script. It's 3,000 years before Christ. Uh, so what is important when you talk about the history of writing is that you see the massive distances that we're talking about. We're talking about 5,000 years back, which is really a long time ago if you look at the history of our you know, contemporary writing. Um, what is important also when you see this, you know, this is very impressive, you know, these people have a lot of power in this. This couldn't be some, you know, cleaning lady that was bored or something. It, there's a lot of structure in there, there's a lot of power working in stone. Um, and it already tells you that uh, you know, history is written by those who define writing, by those who control the code of writing. And, you know, the first script that more people are familiar with visually are, are the hieroglyphs. And, you know, the hieroglyphs are, in the beginning, a mere, you know, representation of power, right? Few people can read, few people can write. So, if you walk by one of these things, you know, as a normal person back, you know, 3,000 years before Christ, it would just be like, yeah, there's someone really smart and impressive here doing some stuff. I had a similar impression when I first moved to Japan eight years ago, and I saw all these signs. First of all, there is no noise anymore, no advertising, no bullshit, you know, that you know, reaches your ears from all sides, no bullshit that reaches you through your eyes. And you look at these you know, Japanese signs, and you're like, that, that must be very, very important stuff. That can be trivial. That can be in a world where cars are the last. There's one car in the last year, the new Toyota. That can't happen, right? No bullshit. Because when you don't, don't understand science, you always imagine these, these people must be really smart and clever to be able to write in such complicated ways. Which leads a lot of idiots to the point where they think they're more impressive when they use a conjugate on their arm as a tattoo. Uh, where they don't know what it means in the basic, sometimes it just says a jerk. Um, and, and that's exactly the function of secret writing, it transports power. Um, now what happens is, you know, so a couple of people came up with these signs, you know, and developed them over hundreds of thousands of years. And then, you know, the priests or the, the, the scribes that were in charge of this, they said, I know they, you know, we want to show how smart they are, but you know, we have to write, and we have to write down our lives. Let's make it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just among us, don't tell anyone that it's easier, but you know, try to make it a little bit easier. And then, you know, the, the priests develop their own hieratic script, which still is awfully complicated. And they also try to make it a little bit more complicated over time. In the end, they had about 6,000 6, symbols writing that to the script. And that's, you know, where it gets interesting. Um, no matter how much you try to hide the code, uh, you've seen that the Second World War, all the encryption on you know, the German spike, but the Germans are not stupid in these days. They try to really encrypt things hard, the Japanese as well. But sooner or later, there will be a hacker that, that, that hacks the code. And that's what happened to the hieratic script. So, around 600, it took a long time. Right? We're talking 3,000 to 600. That's 2,500 years. It's really long time, but they have it. And they developed a demotic, or in other words, popular script, the same word as democracy in here. Um, and these were hackers, right? They, they used 23 symbols. 
uh, away from 6,000. And I think they had a lot of fun. You can tell that, that you know, this is, there's a little bit more action going on. The other one, you can feel that. Um, so, if you look at writing over time, you can see that back and forth between the priests and the hackers. You know, uh, one hacker, uh, one hacker population that we know very well and that, that is very proud to describe themselves as hacker. They even say they hack the sea, you know, uh, that were the, the, the Israelites, you know, and they developed their own, even more simplified form of writing um, around the 10th century before Christ. And, uh, and then the real hackers came. That's like matrix style, hardcore hacker uh, uh, dudes, um, and that's that's these guys. You know, they they lie on you. They, they you know it seems kind of lazy. If you look at the writing, it's really it's a little bit like you know maybe uh, southern Italy. They're like, yeah, I write, you know, and yeah, this guy should die. I write this. Play. So around 744 Christ, they hacked um, the, the, the Hebrew script, and you know what happened, right? The, they actually didn't just hack it, they also used that language to build amazing stuff. Like democracy to begin with, um, theater, philosophy, also in terms of technology, they were an amazing population. They, a few people know that, but the first. Uh, steam engine was, was in the Bibliothek Gardens of Alexandria, throwing balls up in the air. Um, so hackers, they do not just change the code, they alter the laws, they open new possibilities, and um, here's uh, an example from the 5th uh, uh, century before Christ, and this is about as simple as it gets. Of course, it has a lot to do with the material they, they were writing on, but you still have to develop um, a writing system that is as simple as this. We can almost read this even if you don't uh, know, you know, the, the, the Greek alphabet. So, whatever the hackers come and make simpler, you know, the priests look at it patiently from afar, and they're like, yeah. Thank you very much for inventing so much new technology. I think we can use that for ourselves as well. Um, but uh, now it's our turn. And you know, the Romans came and they said, mm, we're not going to make things all too complicated now because you know, we're dealing with so many smart Greek people that also hang out, hang out here. And they might find out that we try to make things more complicated. We're just going to add a little straight. And we need that because when you have you know, you're hacking stone, which we need to show our power. Senatus populus for it at home, you have to have that everywhere to show you know who's in charge. Of course the people is there are there too. But first it's the Senate and the people are very, very smart and delicate, you know, reintroducing some complexity, right? And that's the turning point. So you have 3,000 years up until the Romans where things got simpler, and now the priests were back in power much, much more. That's just a um, Now, there are some hackers up north, you know, the Germans with the deep voices and the big muscles and, you know, some that come into the Roman Empire and they destroy everything and, you know, some of them destroy the writing as well. But the German word for like the Buchstaben is that means actually, you know, a stick from, from a certain tree and then, you know, they use these letters as they remember them to like throw them in the air and read like, you know, oracles from it, they were making a mess. Um, further up north, that's an example from Denmark, they all actually trying to use the writing as well to make sense. But in general, that's, that's a pretty evil horde of hackers there. Um, they'll come in later, you know, because the priests are patient and they say, wait, wait, um, we're not going to let these barbarians get away with runes. We're going to go really hardcore. Now you have a counter movement to the, to the Greeks, where you know that's just the first step. Right? It's already pretty hard to read. And then, you know, 
equations also lead to beauty. That's the argument of the priest, and they're kind of right because, you know, this is all beautiful. It's over the years. Yeah, time does its thing, but you can imagine how beautiful that was. Um, this is where they got to the end. So the priests, you know, they were writing these, and they were very precise. They didn't make any spelling errors or forget any pieces or so. They were very precise. But the writing form became so complicated and so diverse that it almost became like a doctor's handwriting. And if you remember in the beginning, of course, that helps you guarding the power. If you read from something like this, you know, and say, that's God who said that, um, you're, you're fantastic. You must be magic. You must be really superior. Uh, of course, most people wouldn't even get to the point where they see this kind of writing. They would just like you read from something that is like wow. And uh, but again, you know, there was quite a long period in, uh, from from zero from from zero to the eighth century. But then, you know, you have the first big Caesar coming back, the first big king coming back, um, called Carl the Great. Um, and he said, okay guys, uh, it's all cool with dolls and stuff, and you know, you're patient, I love your books, they look fantastic, but I have a kingdom here that needs some control, that needs some guidance, that needs to, you know, we need, need to agree on some form of writing, so we don't use it just to control people's minds. Uh, we need, you know, a little bit more order, and he produced the, the Carolingian manuscripts, they're kind of complicated. But if you try, you know, we kind of, you can kind of read it again. And, and, and you know, if you think that this is a long time ago, that's pretty impressive. Um, first hacker, then again, it took a long time. Um, because, of course, the church was getting nervous, you know, they, you know, crazy ideas they had to keep their power, you know, during the Middle Ages. I don't need to tell you everything there. And you know what ended it as well? Is this guy, uh, Johannes Gutenberg, not a big, big hat. And that's real, real, like, Greek style hack. Um, and what he invented is, you know, a very, a very evil thing from the point of view of the church. He said, like, okay, well, in the future, in the future, reading is not just reserved to a very, very few people. Actually, there's, a, there's some problem there. Is it okay. What does it mean that, that uh, that's... Do I, do, I, do I do something that makes this noise? Or... Yeah, I probably should shake so much. <laughs> yeah, is that all? Yeah, try to stand still. I'll try to stand so okay. <laughs> So they said uh, that uh, reading is not something for very rich people because actually books at the time it was so much even in the Renaissance books were really expensive. Uh, we're gonna make this a little bit more popular and as you know uh, the people really like that. One of the first things that was printed after the Bible was born. Like lots and lots of porn, lots of porn in the, in the Renaissance age. You know, people like that kind of, that kind of style. Of course, the church didn't, because the church tried to control people over their bodies. It's a really good, it's a really good uh, access point to control mind and body. Um, so we had another uh, uh, hacker here in Italy. I don't know how we call him. Maybe he calls the Edison. Which sounds like he's some friend from me from Basel, but. Uh, and he said, okay, um, you know, we had, we had a pretty nice writing system back in the day. Uh, um, I'm going to you know, use Carl the Great's hacking and combine it with, you know, the, the Roman script. Um, these, are, these are my guys. Let's keep them. So we don't go crazy. Let's keep those servers. We're not barbarians in not German. Um, uh, make things easier. And you see, we're already in 1470, so it took quite a long time to get a shape that looks pretty much like what we're used to right now. 
and uh, you know the craziest people are not the Germans, they're the English people. And uh, some guy in England said, "Do we really need those serfs? Need some nice one to aid the house, uh, but maybe we get rid of it." And I think it's not an accident that it happened in the age of the Enlightenment, where they started, you know, fumble around with serfs. Because remember, the serfs were, you know, the Roman thing. We show power. And for a long time, that was the case with black leather. It's, you know, you can see it up to today that uh, uh, hip hoppers use the black leather because, you know, we're the gang, you know, we're, we're a close society, we're really strong. Fuck yeah. Um, <laughs> so, of course, the, the French didn't like that. Yes, but, but they found that horrible. Um, and, uh, you know, the European magazine introduced some pretty barbaric, badass. Uh, some said it back in the day. I don't know if they did it on purpose. Um, but yeah, it is kind of barbaric. But it's like cool. 12 kilograms from a moment. And as always with the French, you know, first they think it's the mouton, and then you know, they become the monster. Uh, it's a very famous example of trouble uh, at the end of the 19th century. Uh, you know, Zola, you know, writing his famous letter for President of the Republic. Creating laws and laws and laws of stress. And since then, uh, you'll see, I'll go through a couple more examples. Some static is always a sign of you know, trouble, revolution, and all too popular stuff. You know, even the Swiss would guess that we have hackers, but you know one of them pretty well. You know, they're like, okay, just simplifying the types not enough, we need to also simplify that roster. And they were taking lots of ideas from Gutenberg. The hacker, you know, and, and simplified like indeed. Um, and then, you know, there are black hackers. You know, um, this is actually from an Apple ad. Uh, and one thing he said in some series, very clearly, if you, if you hear him speak, you see some series for sure. No Vietnamese had called me name, um, which was one very popular parole of the MT. The Vietnam movement by black people uh, at the end of the 60s. Um, now, as you already might have felt, yesterday's hackers are today's priests. So, you know, as the Israelites were hacking the, the, the Egyptians and the Greek were hacking the Israelites and the Romans and so on, they all became the next priests. Uh, probably not this. And we have more famous examples in current time. This, look at this badass hat girl here. What the hell is he doing? And you see him today is one of the most priestly people we know. He even claims that he does magic. He went pretty far. At least in the Middle Ages, people weren't saying magic, they were just saying, yeah, God, I know what God thinks. So he has and this one. So these two hackers, they had a massive, in the beginning they were all, you know, firing flames for each other because hackers loved each other. Uh, but they had a massive dispute and the biggest reproach from, from uh, Steve Jobs to Bill Gates is that he had no taste because he didn't care about typography. Um, which is really interesting. Um, and this hacker, you know, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember the famous Obama campaign where he was not president yet, he used this symbol here, and of course, was not so smart because he showed himself being a hacker, he has the president symbol, and of course, he used uh, uh, sunset for it. Um, so, as the campaign moved forward, you know, the, the, the claim changed from, uh, from hope, which, yeah, is, is strong. It's is, is set in a nice spot to change again, believe in. And there's a strong emphasis on belief. Obama became this priest. And of course, he uses sect form for that. Now, we know today that, you know, maybe the belief was a little bit too strong. Uh, 
um, and is preparing his next campaign in 2012. And tries, you know, he's a little bit softer on Sarah. He goes for a slap Sarah, which is not so clearly a Sarah. You say, well, I'm still, not so much, but next time I'll be, I promise. 